Hi, um, my name is Abby and I'm here with OC Habitats to talk to you about sustainable shopping. OC Habitats is a nonprofit organization in Orange County um, that does conservation through monitoring, education, and outreach. With events such as this one, we seek to educate people on how they can reduce their environmental impact. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to type them in the chat box and we will be stopping for a question and answer break halfway through and at the end again. So let's get into it. Okay, fast fashion. What is fast fashion? So here we have the definition, an approach to the design, creation, and marketing of clothing fashions that emphasizes making fashion trends quickly and cheaply available to consumers. So that's a dictionary definition, but it basically just means that popular retail brands operate with the goal of mass producing cheap items that constantly create or fuel new trends. And this encourages people to feel compelled to buy new items and throw away old ones as much as possible in order to keep that company profiting. Most companies which sell new clothing for relatively low prices would be considered fast fashion. And yeah. So what counts as fast fashion? Um, here are, <laughs> here's a big list compiled of some <laughs> examples, some common brands that you may have seen. Well, we've definitely all seen at least several of these in our lives. Um, and most companies which sell new clothing for relatively low prices are fast fashion, and the most infamous include these ones, but there are many more. In my opinion, it's safe to assume that unless the company is higher end clothing, secondhand, or has a very specific business model that focuses on slow fashion and ethics, it's probably a fast fashion brand, but you can always do your own research about the companies that you are curious about because each brand is different and they all have their own stories and you can always look up Google anything you want to know about them. So the effects of fast fashion are, there's, there's a lot of them. The first <laughs> section would be human rights. 97% of fast fashion comes from other countries overseas, mostly throughout Asia. Factories are propped up here because companies know that they can get cheap labor and not be held accountable for their negative impact on their workers or the country's environment. This, of course, comes with the cost of these factories underpaying and mistreating their workers. Most fast fashion companies are basically sweatshops, the factories are, um, where they're Workers are overworked and underpaid and often in really unhealthy conditions, risking injury or illness from their work. Some have been revealed to use child labor and or forced labor, and they lack workers' rights or don't enforce their workers' protection. So these large fast fashion companies use that to their advantage and exploit them. Ethically, this is obviously not good because we should only be supporting businesses which use ethical practices and make their factories a healthy working environment. This is a massive human rights issue in many other nations, and the vast majority of the, this problem is funded by consumers in the US and the UK. So another big part of fast fashion is its environmental impact. The constant buy and throw away pattern in this business model makes the fashion industry responsible for 13 million tons of textile waste each year, and only 1% is recycled, which basically means that 99% of it is trashed. 35% of microplastics released into the world's oceans are from synthetic textiles. Clothes, cheaply made clothes, often contain plastic, nylon, polyester, those are all just fancy ways of saying plastic. Um, when we wash these clothes, microplastics can get into our waterways, and at the end of their life lifespan, these clothes do not biodegrade. They fill our landfills and can end up in our oceans, just like our plastic bags, etc. The fashion industry is responsible for 10% of our global carbon emissions, and so for reference, transportation is about 14% and agriculture is about 24%, and we know that transportation and agriculture are both widely understood to be huge polluters and so and um, take up a lot of resources. And so comparatively, 
10% versus 14 and 24. That's a pretty big chunk. Um, 90% of wastewater, which includes clothing dyes and sometimes toxic metals from fast fashion factories, is dumped directly into waterways without treatment in countries where these facilities exist. They don't always have the same laws and regulations against this dumping, so that is, again, exploited by the companies that choose to prop up factories there. Fast fashion also uses up a massive amount of water in each ton, uh, in, with each ton of dyed fabric taking 200 tons of water to produce. In South Asian and Southeast Asian countries where so many people don't even have access to clean drinking water, this is kind of a ridiculous amount <laughs> of water. So what can we do about it? Well, there are a lot of ways that you can use your voice to make a change in this world. There are different ways that we vote, protest, and we all have different opportunities um, in our lives to make change. But one way we can all at least avoid contributing to the pollution and inhumane practices of these companies is by boycotting them and instead exploring our other options. In our economy, we vote with our dollars. So diverting your monetary support from companies that you believe are unethical is an effective way to use your voice. So then where do I get my clothes? Well, our options are as shown. This pyramid is known as the hierarchy of human needs. Buying, buying number one, um, uh, no, number one, using what you already have um, is always kind of the best option. It takes no natural resources and no pollute, causes no pollution to use something that you already have in your house. And that's, that's always should be your number one, to just check around your cabinets and your attic and see if there's something that you can repurpose and just use in a different way or just get creative about. Um, next, borrow something. If it's something that you need for only one event or just to get one thing done or for only a short period of time, you can just borrow something from a friend. And that's also a great thing to consider because then you won't have extra junk laying around that you don't need anymore. You can also swap with a friend. That's kind of along the same lines. And then next is thrifting. Thrifting is just buying clothes secondhand in any way, which is what we're going to talk about a lot next. You can also make your own of something. And your last option, if you've exhausted all of these and you can't get what you need, you can buy it. But it's always best to check all of your other options first. Thrifting. Hi. Okay. Thrifting is great because it's significantly cheaper than shopping retail usually unless you're buying vintage items. And in that case, it would still be cheaper than if you bought that good quality of items. Um, you can find really great quality items for a very low price. Thrifting in store is a bit more work than shopping in a retail shop because you do have to search throughout the store. But when you do put in the work, you can find Anywhere from vintage, really high quality items to brand new items in great condition for way less money than if you bought it new. You're saving money, you're preventing waste, you're decreasing your carbon footprint, and you're, boycott you're boycotting unethical labor practices. One of the most common places to thrift is Goodwill, which is what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so... The dollar signs on here show the general idea of price range. All of these shops will give you clothes for cheaper than real retail shops, so keep that in mind. The three dollar signs looks like a lot of money. It's actually still very inexpensive. It's just comparatively to other thrift shops. So Goodwill is great because there are several located throughout Orange County. Their thrift stores are large shops filled with direct donations, and you can find literally anything there. Goodwill is a nonprofit too, which seeks to find and create jobs with, uh, for people with barriers or obstacles such as disabilities that make it difficult for them to find work. So you're also supporting a great cause when you shop at Goodwill. Salvation Army is very similar to Goodwill. Um, same store format. You can also find basically anything. Um, we have fewer of them in Orange County, but we still have a couple. And Salvation Army is run by a church, which has many different ministries, which mostly support veterans. Mariner's Church Thrift Shop in Newport is amazing. The shop is located at the church, and it is also from direct donations. Their prices are very low, and I found some of my favorite clothing and jewelry there, so it's, it's really awesome. Um, Save More Thrift is another privately owned shop. It's not a nonprofit. It is known for being very inexpensive, and they have a large selection, huge selection. Um, as with any of these shops, what you'll find here will be different every day. 
because what they sell is whatever is donated to them at that time. So many people ask me, you know, what's the best thrift shop? But honestly, they're all great. And I always find something cool in each one because like I said, there's so much variety and it's different every single day. They never have the same thing twice. So yeah. Uh, next orange circle antique mall is it's not one shop, but it's a whole shopping center of antiques run by different business owners. So this is going to be kind of different. It's, not going to be as much it's not really the same nearly the same as any of these thrift shops it's all authentic antiques and mostly the stores are filled with like antique furniture and other antique items but they do have some vintage clothing that's really cool and there's a lot of cool treasures there um buffalo exchange and crossroads trading co are both buy and sell stores they are more selective and specific in the styles that they sell, which is why they are a bit more pricey because they sort through everything that they're given and they buy it from the seller and then they put it on their shelves. So they do have more of like a specific audience. They're both kind of targeted towards teenagers. They try to stay kind of like with the fashion, but it's still secondhand. So it's awesome. And yeah, um, with all of these shops, they do take your old clothes too. So along with our whole conversation about buying secondhand, you also want to make sure that when you're done with your clothes, you know, don't just throw them away. Like you can donate them to any of these shops. And especially, you know, with Buffalo Exchange and Crossroads Shading Co., if you use stuff that's actually really good quality, but you can't make use of it anymore, they'll buy it from you. So that's another great way to dispose of your old clothes. Okay, so this is kind of halfway through. We're gonna stop for a little bit of a Q&A. Does anyone have any questions? You can type them in the chat box and we will read them out. So Abby, we have two questions currently, but hopefully we'll write some more while uh, you're answering these two. The first one is how can we find out which companies use sweatshops? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so, um, it's sometimes really easy to find out and sometimes not so much. You have to do more digging. So the companies that I put on the screen and listed, all of them have had specific allegations where people have come out and said, this company uses sweatshops. Um, don't buy from them. So those ones are the ones that are like pretty obvious. You can read articles about them online if you just look it up. And there are some other companies that um might be more underground and more kind of hard to figure out but i would overall say that anytime it you can usually tell if they're using cheap materials and they're shipping from a foreign country depending on what country it is unless it's like the uk which i'm not sure but anytime where it's from a foreign country and it's cheap materials and it's a large, like large company that produces them quickly and doesn't have a specific business model geared towards ethics or sustainability, it's safe to assume that they're fast fashion and that the definition of sweatshops just means that they have two or more like labor law violations so it's just really unlikely that they're treating their workers well if that's what their business model looks like so it's safe to assume in my opinion but you can always do your own research and figure it out for yourself and I, I, I recommend that for any time you buy anything from anywhere not even just with sweatshops just always research the um, company's ethics in every way possible but yeah that would be my answer. All right, next question is from Bianca. She says, is there any go-to website that might evaluate different brands and check if they are sustainable? Yes, I believe that website does exist. I don't know the name of it right now, but I believe it does exist. So <laughs> I don't have a solid answer for you, but I know that there are blogs like that that exist. So I would um, check that out, look it up, um, just like, 
sustainability evaluation blogs and I'm sure there's something out there but I, I, I know I've seen articles from something like that but I don't um, keep up with any specific one I wish I had a better answer but that's all. <laughs> all right and the next question is from Regina. Have any recommendations for online secondhand shops? Yeah that is what we're going to be talking about next so Stay tuned. <laughs> I have a lot, a large list. Okay. And then last question in, is there a day of the week that is best to hit some of the shops that you mentioned? Hmm. Or they get um, I think most of them get their donations or send out their donations on Sundays and Mondays, but I think every shop is different. I think some of them do it on Thursdays. So um, yeah, I would, that's another thing you can just look up, but um, that honestly, I think that's a smart thing to consider because you can go when they just restock, restock their shelves. So they're going to have more stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that like any other day of the week isn't going to be just as good because like I said, with thrifting, it's such a treasure hunt that, you know, you can find kind of anything if you look through more, more thoroughly, but it's totally up to your preference. It's, it's, it works either way basically is what I mean. <laughs> And then McKenna says, also, many thrifts have half off days. So you might want to, once you get linked into one, you might be able to get on their mailing list and find out about those. Yeah, for sure. Especially Goodwill. They do, they do sales like weekly um, and they have like different tags. All of their clothes are, have different like tags on them, like different color tags, like blue, green, red. And every week-ish, they do, they switch the color and whatever color they're on is like half off. And so then you go and you're like looking and you find something you like and then it's like, oh, it's a yellow tag and yellow tags are half off this week. Ha -ha, I'm so lucky. So that's great. All right. Well, that's all of our questions. So we can go back. I'm going to turn off my microphone. Cool. Okay. So. Now that we've kind of gone through that, I'm going to show you guys this little fashion show video that me and my friends put together. And it's just going to show you some of our favorite thrifting finds. So I will push play and you guys can just listen along. It's about two minutes. Oh, come back. There you have it. So that was just a couple examples of our clothes. All of those clothes, every single clothing item you just saw was bought secondhand in some way, whether it was from an online thrift shop, garage sale, um, swapped with friends. And yeah, so for me, um, I would say probably 90% of the clothes I own are thrifted. I haven't bought anything new aside from individual specific things that I necessarily needed 
for like two years, anytime that I've gone shopping for clothes, it's always been secondhand since I started getting passionate about the environment. So it's definitely possible to fill your whole wardrobe with all secondhand things. And you can find a way to find almost anything thrifted. Okay, so online secondhand shops. So here is a larger list, a general list of places online where you can find secondhand clothing or other items. If you'd like a, to snap a quick photo of this before we move on, you may do so now because I'm not going to talk about all these individually. Um, but one thing to keep in mind while thrifting online is that you have all the power to support whoever you see fit because it gives a lot of you know buyer's power to you. Some of these shops are entirely run by one company, and some of these shops are made up of independent sellers, which basically means it's a platform for individuals anywhere to set up a shop and buy directly from them. And you can also set up a shop yourself to sell your old clothing. Many independent sellers and online thrift shops in general have other causes that they support. And I also recommend using your buyer's choice to support people of color, women of color, black and indigenous businesses, because supporting marginalized groups is a very integral part of creating a more equitable and just future and a safe, healthy, and planet for all, which should be at the root of our mission. So consider that while shopping around. Some of these businesses I listed, including Fire Vintage, Orchid Boheme, Thrilling, um, Sabrina Hayek Vintage, are founded and owned by black women. and um, also on these pl platforms, with independent sellers like Depop, Etsy, eBay, ASOS Marketplace, etc., you can buy from specific independent people who you want to support as well. So that gives you a lot of choice, and you can always use that choice for good. So that's something to keep in mind while choosing where to do your shopping. Try checking out those shops specifically first. So here are some of my favorites. Um, first one is Thrilling. Thrilling is one of the businesses I listed before. It is so cool. Like it's this, it is, it has a huge selection. It is one of the more expensive ones because the list that I showed you guys before, it includes both specifically like vintage, nice clothing places and just like thrift shops where it's just whatever donations come or whatever people want to sell, which can be anything. Thrilling is one of them that's, that is focused on vintage clothing, so it will be more expensive, but it also will be a lot better quality and a lot more like unique, really special items that you can find. So Thrilling is a platform that basically partners with boutiques and vintage shops throughout the U.S., so they go through and partner with them and find specific items that they're selling that they get in their stores that they sell on this site. There's a huge selection. Um, there's, it's just, it's wonderful quality. And it's definitely something that I would highly recommend checking out. Um, Depop is also awesome. Depop is more, you can find cheap stuff there. You can find very, very cheap stuff there. You can also find Expensive stuff there, you can find anything because it just depends on what it is because you can sell literally anything on Depop. But um, most of it is just people's old clothes that they don't want anymore and they resell it. and Or it's um, things that specific business runners and they're running their own shop on Depop will thrift shop or vintage shop and find something nice and resell it. Um, with Depop, they have a wonderful buying and selling culture in my opinion. The people that sell on Depop are just so, so nice. And they're always, um, if there's someone who is, has been doing Depop for a while and is a responsible person, has good reviews, they're always super responsive, super thorough with the things that they sell, like super thorough with their descriptions and so friendly and send you little notes in your packages. And I've just always had great experiences with Depop. Um, a really large portion of my closet is from them and there's been very 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 few times where I've had something go wrong and if it if something did go wrong it's because I failed to read the reviews and I was dumb and impulsive about it and um, still Depop protected me with their buyers protection and refunded me so it was great um, Etsy is really similar to Depop also independent sellers but um, Etsy is more focused on artists so Etsy is less um, it's less people emptying their closets and more um, more like handmade items out of recycled materials you can find. 
Um, there's all there is really nice um, old vintage stuff that's really beautiful and it sometimes even this is a little off topic but even eco-friendly uh, makeup and skincare and art beautiful art so Essie is also amazing and then run the runway run the runway is really interesting um, it's a really great opportunity for anybody who uh, has frequent formal events or even just once so basically how basically how rent the runway works is it's um, a rental rental place for high high-end clothing so you can find let's say you have prom and you want to get a really nice dress but you don't want to pay full price for it you can find a dress on rent the runway that's worth hundreds and sometimes even thousands of dollars and rent it for a very small fraction of the price you wear it for your event and then you send it back to them and they take really really good care of their clothing they wash them really nicely and they uh, send them off to the next person so what's great about that is you probably won't ever wear your prom dress after prom again. And so there's no point in you even keeping it. And so you save so much money and you can get a way higher end item. And um, you can also do monthly prescriptions with Rent the Runway. So if you're someone who has to do business meetings on a regular basis and you need to wear nicer clothes, but you don't want to have to be repeating the same outfits over and over again, or you want to do something sustainable, uh, or you're someone who has formal events often, Rent the runway. You can do a monthly prescription or a monthly subscription, and they will send you um, the all the clothes that you order, and you just send it right back, and you save a ton of money. So it's a really great opportunity if you're someone who would get good use out of that. So online shopping tips: message your sellers, ask questions because you can always find out more about the item that you want to buy and make sure that it's something that you really want. So for example, women's clothing, if something says it's a medium, we all know that it could be literally anything <laughs> because women's clothing is just like so, so different sometimes. And like you can have something that's one size and it fits you and you can have something that's a completely different size and it doesn't, or and it does fit you. It's just, you never know. So what you can do is like, let's say this dress is a medium and you're like, well, that's not specific enough. You can message your sellers and ask them for the specific waist measurements or whatever parts you're concerned about. And if they're um, a seller that's reviewed well and they're responsible and they're really dedicated to their shop, they will respond sometimes within an hour. Like I get responses super quick, especially from places like Depop where the sellers are really dedicated. So you can always find out more um, about the fabric type and more specifics so you can know what you're getting yourself into. Also, I highly, highly recommend reading reviews. You can always tell if you're going to get something the way that you expect it if you read the reviews. There has been very few times where I've had bad online thrifting experiences. And when I did, it was because I didn't read the reviews and the shop had like three it was they had they had sold like three things and had one star obviously they're not very dedicated and obviously whoever they did sell those three things to didn't like them very much and so you can't really expect much out of them it's probably just best to look for someone else but um if you find someone who looks like they've been running their shop for a while and they've sold a lot of things and they have great reviews you're gonna have a really great experience and they're usually going to be very very kind and really want you to have a good experience with them Know your style, your size, your budget, and your needs before you start because this will just ensure that you have a better experience. Okay, and then we're going to talk about upcycling. So we have another short little video, this one's much shorter, of my friend McKenna who's here showing her upcycling. I've done some too, but mine is not nearly as impressive as hers, so I will let her show you and I'll just speak through it. Okay, so basically, this is, uh, this was a t-shirt that was just white, and I kind of tie-dyed it, and then painted this little slogan on the front, and here we have some jeans that she painted on. She loves painting on her jeans. It's very impressive, and ooh, look how pretty that is. Okay, yeah, so if you ever have a pair of pants or something that's denim, or even, you know, the first shirt was cotton, so anything that you think is boring, you can just spice it up. She um, sewed patches on this and then, oops, sorry, 
with this last one, these these jeans were or were straight cut, and she put a slit and a patch in them to make them more flared. So anytime where you have something that you think is boring or it's just not inspiring you anymore or you don't really wear it that often, there are so many ways you can get creative and spice it up again and make it something that you really love and you can get a longer use out of it so that you don't feel the need to buy a new pair of jeans or a new shirt or anything. You can always um, re-sew something, paint it, um, or I don't know, just use it in a different way that you might not have thought about before. Okay, and then if you decide that you want to kind of save up and splurge on something that's nicer and not secondhand that you want to buy new, there are some options for, there are some sustainable options for buying something new. So all of these are more high-end eco-fashion brands, and they all have specific focuses on ethics and sustainability in their designs. Most of that is um, along the lines of creating their clothing out of organic materials with um, ethical labor and low impact practices. And so if you did wanna look into any of these designers, those were, are also a great option. They're definitely gonna be more expensive but if it's something that you really want to splurge on and buy something really nice, it's a great option. And it's not just clothes that you can find thrifted, you can find anything secondhand. So here are some examples. On the left, we have my bike, Harriet. I love her very much. I found Harriet at uh, Salvation Army about two years ago. She is uh, an authentic vintage twin bike, probably from the 50s or 60s. We don't, don't know exactly. And I love this bike. I found her at Salvation Army for $100, and I got her for my birthday. And I use this bike, like, every single day. It's so beautiful. It's in great shape. And it just makes me feel so cute. It's so cute, and I have so much fun with it. It's great. And then I also have my French easel that's um next to it and this easel was is probably worth about two or three hundred dollars french easels have a very wide range of what they can go for from like 100 to several hundred dollars depending on the quality and the, the creator but with this one it would probably be worth about two or three hundred and i found it on ebay for 75 dollars which is a huge steal for a french easel and it was kind of a risk because the shop had very, like, little activity on it, and the picture was kind of, like, bad quality, and I was like, I'm not sure if this is going to come, and if it comes, it's going to be broken. It's probably better if I found a shop that was more well-reviewed, um, well but it came, and it's perfect, so it was great. Mm -hmm. It was a steal, and it's beautiful, and I've painted many, many paintings on it. And then next we have this blue and white china is like my mom's favorite thing in the world. She's obsessed with the blue and white china. And most of these were just found on the shelves of Goodwill. So if you've ever been to somewhere like Goodwill or Salvation Army where they do have, where they have all those shelves that are just like full of random stuff, um, it might look like a lot of junk, but again, it's a treasure hunt. If you look through it, you can find such cool things. And this is um, really beautiful china that probably would, would have been worth a lot of money um, if it was bought firsthand and it's, it's just something my mom loves collecting, and you can find it for really low prices. And then on the right, we have some things that my are my co-intern here, Olivia, has bought. Both of these are from Goodwill. This little picture with the bird, it's so beautiful. And then that shelf, which is beautiful. It's in great quality. Or it's in great shape, great quality. And she found it just at Goodwill for, for cheap. Okay, so that's about the end. We'll do one more Q&A, and then we'll finish off. So does anybody have any extra questions that they want to talk about? There's a few on the list, and maybe people will write some more as, we're, as you're answering. Mm -hmm. um, so Bianca says, Orange Circle also has tons of different shops with a range of prices and tons of different products from clothing to jewelry or furniture and art. It's a great right. place to shop. Right, yeah. I agree. There, it's it's um it's a collection. It's a huge center, a market of 
of antique shops and every antique shop has its own has its own thing I've, I found a lot of beautiful jewelry there and yeah Crystal asks, uh, when brands say they are ethical or sustainable, is that usually in terms of the environment or human rights or both? Or does it depend on the company? Well, I found that usually, mm, actually that might not be true. I was going to say that usually they go hand in hand and any company who's focused on one usually wants to be focused on both. But it really does depend because also there are, there are shops and like this is kind of just how our world is like there are companies that will claim to be sustainable or claim to be ethical and they're just not or they are in one way but then they contradict themselves in another way so like i said before i would just recommend researching in every way possible any shop that you want to buy from but i would say in general if they say they're sustainable that's focused on environment and if they say that they're ethical that's probably focused more on human rights but a lot of them will try to go both routes and if it's a if it's a genuine company run by genuine people who are actually dedicated to the cause then they'll usually go hand in hand and they'll they'll focus on both and also i mean if they're if they're running from sweatshops it's not ethical or sustainable but <laughs> if they have a different um different production model of any sorts i mean they can be it just depends. It's different for every company, but yeah. All right. The next question is, um, do a lot of stores, storefront and online have a restocking fee? If you do want to return something, what has your been, been your experience? Restocking fee. I don't know the answer to that. I don't, I've never tried to return something. The thing about this is like, I mean, if you go to Goodwill and you buy something, it's so cheap. Like you, first of all, you probably wouldn't buy something that you wanted to return because you can just try it on. And, and with online shops, that's different. Um, that's definitely online shops. Usually they, um, you can return and they don't have a restocking fee. I would say for most of them, um, with Depop and ones that are independent sellers, they'll have their own policies. Um, some people on Depop and Etsy and stuff say no returns and then you just get what you get. And some of them will refund you if they feel nice that day I don't know. <laughs> um but with in-person shops I've never tried to return something to Goodwill because I've never needed to because again it's so cheap like if it was something really really expensive and I wanted to like make sure I loved it and then I return it yeah but it, I have never been in that situation with Goodwill so I don't know <laughs> All right. Um, Kimmy Garcia is asking, what are the best thrift shops to shop online? I think she may have come in late. So if you want to um, sift back to your, your list for her. Yeah. So this is my overall list and my favorites is on the next slide. So if you want to take a picture real quick or just skim through these, I can also send this list to you later if it's something that you want me to send. And then these are my favorites. These are the ones that I have more experience with and uh, I, I think are the most reliable. So, so yeah. Great. And then Haley says, what thrift stores do you re recommend for housewares? Houseware. So with houseware, it'll be Goodwill, Salvation Army. And let's see. I think... Yeah, Goodwill Salvation Army, Mariner's Church. That's probably the best one. With the Orange Circle Antique Mall, that one will have vintage things. So they'll be like, it's different. Like they'll be like really nice quality, more expensive. And that's, the Orange Circle Antique Mall is definitely a great place to look for houseware if you want to buy some really nice houseware. But if you just want like something cheap, then Goodwill and Salvation Army and Meredith Church, all of them have shelves and shelves of random donations of things like that. And you just sift through and find something that would work. Right. Next question is, what about books? Do you know um, about any places that do great books or book exchanges? Yeah, I think it's it's the same thing with the houseware. Goodwill, Salvation Army, and Meredith Church, I would, or I would say, are the best for books probably i'm not sure about mariner's book selection i think they have some but again it's like with with any big thrift shop similar to goodwill and salvation army where it's just whatever donations they get they get it's different every time 
Um, I, I don't know any specific shop that has like a focus on books. Um, but I know that also like local libraries do book exchanges all the time and things like that. I mean, that's still like, that's secondhand, like that's thrifting. Anytime that you're sharing with someone or using something that's, you're not buying new, you're, you're doing something sustainable because you're not using um, more materials or using more natural resources to create something. So that's also, I would say libraries and then just, just sift through the shelves of those shops. All right. Um, McKenna says thrift book thrift books is an online website where you can buy secondhand books. The pricing is great and it can be used for textbooks. That's great. And I know that um, Amazon also has uh, Amazon and some of those places where you can buy books. They sometimes have options for um, use, buy, buying used books and they have a bunch of shops that are, you know, using, um, sorry, my dog's barking. Um, we're using, you know, using those um, different little shops that have accounts with Amazon that, you know, they're secondhand bookshops. So those are great. I actually purchased a bunch of books myself, um, probably like 20 books. I needed a set of books that I wanted to give out as gifts. They were all brand new and I got them for like a buck each. It was, and they would have, you know, when they were first out hot off the press, they were probably 10 or $15. So it was a great deal. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you for sharing that resource. And then um, uh, Charlotte says you can buy thrift books online as well. And McKenna says also many libraries have used bookstores inside of them. And then um, another one was Friends of the Library, Irvine and Newport Beach both have Friends of the Library shops like right next to their regular library. And then there's a little um, book exchange place. I don't know what the name of them are called, where they have a little, like almost looks like a birdhouse, but it's, yeah, I've seen those. It's really cool. Yeah, I've seen those around, I think, uh, Corona Del Mar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. That was the last question. Does anyone, um, we can now open it up to a discussion if you, everybody wants to turn their microphone on and if you want to continue to talk a little bit, if you have some ideas or experience with... Um, with thrifting in any way, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Well, um, personally, like my entire wardrobe is thrifted, same as Abby. And I'm also a seller on Depop. So when I go thrifting, um, I'm able to what we call is like flip the clothes that I find. So if I find like really cool vintage items, I can sell them for like a significantly higher price on Depop. And that's how I like make my living. So it's a really cool option. And it's really good for people who are um, too young to get normal jobs. It's super easy and doable. Yeah, I've, um, I, I tried starting Depop, Depop shop myself too and selling little clothes. And yeah, it's fun. It's really easy to do. And you can, you can make a good amount of money from that. That's great. Do you guys find that as sellers, um, you're able to, you know, is it a big pain for you to ship things or is it pretty easy? Depop makes it really easy. That's, I think, one of my favorite thing about, things about Depop. Like the, I think that's why the buyer and seller culture is so good and people are just so nice on there and so responsible is they make it really easy for you to just put on a shipping label and send something and um, the transactions are really easy to do. So it, it really isn't, it isn't a huge chore to run the shop. If you, uh, you just need to stay on top of it and make sure you send people their stuff and you're good. Mm -hmm. And personally for shipping, um, my dad works at a university that has um, a discounted shipping center. So I do independent shipping and it's like half the price of the post office. So it's all about like using resources that you have. And also with shipping, there's options to do like purchase recycled packaging or what I do is just like our Amazon purchases and stuff. I reuse the packages. Yeah, that's great. Oh, also another thing I didn't mention is um, it's really easy with shops, with online thrift shops oftentimes to just message your seller. Every time I buy something, I message my seller and say, please package without plastic. And usually, I mean, sometimes they don't, but usually like the majority, vast majority of the time, they'll send me something in like a recycled box or um, recycled materials of some sort or reusable materials. And it's really sweet because like, again, 
they're so considerate on there. Like for some reason, everyone is just so nice. And they're usually really, really respectful of that. And so that's just another really easy way to just get rid of some extra waste. That's great. Um, not produce some extra waste. Um, hi, I'm Charlotte. I just want to say my name because my face isn't showing, but um, this is kind of, this is a little bit off topic of what we're talking about, but I still feel like it's important to talk about, since we are talking about like ethics and sustainability with thrifting. Um, but something I think that we should all be really conscientious of is when we do thrift to think about the potential outcome of gentrification and how it like, like deeply affects people who do rely on thrifting because at least for me, and I, I'm assuming a lot of us, thrifting is a privilege and it assumes that we have the time and money and it's really nice that things are cheap but there's also a lot of people who don't have monetary means to buy full price, like new clothing. And when we do um, like look at thrifting as like our soul, like we don't always need to buy new clothes and we don't always need new things. And the, the demand for thrifting is really, it's increased a lot recently. So prices in thrift stores, as awful as it is, they have increased a lot and it almost makes it more difficult for people who can't even afford to buy um, like regular marked clothing, even more difficult to buy clothing that should be attainable for them. So I just wanted to say that because I think it's really important, especially in Orange County where we do have a large variety of people who come from different income brackets. Um, and when we are going to Goodwills and Salvation Armies and different thrift stores that aren't like, at least in Irvine, our thrift stores are secondhand stores or like consignment stores like Crossroad Tradings where the, where the prices are higher. So when we go to different cities, um, that don't have like the same medium income as Irvine, that it's like that for a reason. So, um, yeah, that's just my point. <laughs> yeah, no, that's super yeah. smart. Good, yeah, great perspective to add. Thank you for sharing. So, yeah. and think, like buying on Depop and stuff and buying from larger like vintage shops online might be a better option because then, um, yeah, you're not, um, you're not increasing the demand and mm -hmm. um, causing issues with our local cheaper shops. So like, yeah, still um, buying, there's still ways to buy secondhand that doesn't cause that gentrification. And so Depot and Etsy and um, other of the online shops that I listed before, as well as like Buffalo Exchange and um, some of our, our local shops that are bigger might be a better option. I think something that could also help, I feel like I should point out something we can all do, is the places that we are thrifting from, we should, um, if we, if you are able and you, and you, you can donate, you should continue to, to play into the cycle of you buy and you give, mm. but I understand if you, if you're like, I need money, I need to sell my clothes, that's completely valid as well, but yeah, just keep that in mind, if you ever need to donate, donate to the places you buy from to keep it, to keep the supply up. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the ones that are um, like nonprofits, like Goodwill and Salvation Army and Mariners Church. Like those are all nonprofits, mm -hmm. so we can we can all always donate, especially if we have the means to do so, because most of us do. <laughs> so, right. Does anyone else have anything they want to add? Any of their own experiences with thrifting, whether in person, online? Um, with fast fashion, any experiences they'd like to share that would be useful? I, I, I think this conversation is going really nicely. It would be nice to hear if anyone else has anything to add. So you just need to take yourself off your microphone and talk to us. Hey guys, I could add in a bit. This is Bianca. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know if we mentioned it. I don't know. I've never used Depop, but I know with Etsy, uh, or not, Poshmark. Um, I use Poshmark, and I sell on Poshmark, and I buy on Poshmark. And it's really nice because you can negotiate the price, too. So, like, you know, if you go something and maybe you're not really sure, like, how much it's worth, or, you know, maybe you'd be willing to sell it for a little cheaper, buyers can always, like, offer what they'd like to pay for it. And then, you know, same other way around. If you see something and maybe you don't have a lot of money, you can offer a cheaper price. That's, like, really nice way to shop and yeah you can also negotiate yeah for sure that's awesome i do have a question about the issue that i think it was was it charlotte that brought it up about the um you know gentrification do 
I mean, it's hard to tell people not to do it, right? Because it really is the right thing to do is to have buy, buy less, reuse, reduce, recycle. How do you have any ideas that um, does anyone have any ideas of how to remedy that situation so that everyone can, you know, be doing the right thing and not affect the community that would be obviously most deeply affected by higher prices? What What is the solution? Or, I mean, I don't know that there is one solution, but um, does anyone have any ideas how we could alleviate that? I think. Oh, sorry, Abby. Oh no, go ahead. You can totally go. Um, I think with the, I think like we said, the solutions are pretty nuanced, but I think um, just reiterating to people that minimalism is good, and I, I definitely think thrifting in general, you're not creating more, so that's fine. But I, I think, I think it's the over overconsumption of thrifting that is ultimately um, destructive to communities because people aren't able to pay for <laughs> sorry my, my dad is yelling at my mom I'm gonna do myself. I mean, you can go in and interject <laughs> okay um yeah I think I think so what Charlotte specifically is talking about is places like like Goodwill and Salvation Army and like the smaller more privately owned or maybe not hardly, but the, like smaller thrift shops that kind of their purpose in a way is to provide cheap clothing, like to make clothing accessible to their communities be, or in lower income families. And so, like she said before, when we're buying more of them and also when we're not donating enough to them, their prices will go up. Um, and that does harm them. So I think that um, the solution would be one to donate more to the nonprofits and donate more to the individual thrift shops and to, I guess, try to buy more from other shops that are geared towards people of like our income bracket. Like mm -hmm. I like, like um, Buffalo exchange and um, other places that their, their sole purpose is not, to provide like cheap clothing, which kind of in a way, I don't know, it is really nuanced because then, I don't know, donate, I think donating is probably one of the great ways to help that situation so that the um, company has more resources to keep their prices low and keep helping their communities. I don't know, what would you guys think about that? Yeah. Um, one tip that I have is to look into um, going to the Goodwill bins, which are these giant Goodwill outlets. I think there's about one in each county, but those are all the excess clothing that isn't sold at Goodwill within a certain period of having it out on the racks. And it's these giant bins of clothing in a big factory space, and they sell all of the clothing by weight, and whatever is not purchased there, I think is either donated to like homeless shelters or something similar to that. And those um, aren't as targeted to marginalized communities because they aren't shops in towns. They're kind of like out of the way. And those are like all the excess clothing that wasn't sold. So if you're willing to like make the trek and go through a little treasure hunt of going through these big bins, it's really worth it because it's cheap and you're helping Goodwill clear out their stock. I think also with that, I'm not exactly sure, but I think a lot of their clothes end up getting thrown away if they don't get bought. Um, I think some of it is donated eventually, but I think some of it is also trashed. So that's something to look into because it's always good to prevent it from being trashed. Totally. And you, can also, you know, that stuff is so cheap. You can also go there, buy bags of clothing and bring it to like homeless shelters yourself. Like that's also awesome. Totally, yeah. Like go be hands on if you really want to be active in that and bring the clothing to people who need it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Great. Well, we have about five more minutes if anyone else has any other questions. Otherwise, we will uh, let Abby wrap it up here. Anything else, anyone? No? Okay. Okay. Um, thank you guys all for joining this discussion and listening and participating. Um, you can visit OCGHabitats.org to find out more about what we do. And if you guys have any more questions or want me to send you any of these lists or anything like that, you can always um, email or um, let me know. So 
thank you guys so much. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you all soon.